All right, today we're continuing our improvement series for Call of Duty, and we're specifically focusing on the X-Cross. So if you played a tactical shooter like Counter-Strike or Valorant, you probably already know what this is, but it's basically a designed two-man setup where you and a partner can do this on the fly, where you're watching his cross and he's watching your cross, and it's a really good way to use some teamwork with the partner so they can hold a specific area of the map down. So let's get right into it. So X-Crosses can be used in both Respawn and Search and Destroy. It's a little bit easier just to do it in search just because you'll have a little bit more time to plan it out think about it uh, because with respawn you're basically going to be playing off the fly and making sure that you can try and get into a setup real quick and you have to already be in that specific situation so a lot of the times you will see this in search and destroy usually with a man advantage like a 2v1 or something like that just because this is basically bred to be used in some situation where you already are up a man because it's basically unbeatable if you can have that man advantage so let's take a little example of what I mean by an X cross. So let's take a look at P5 over here on hotel. So this is P5. It's really important if you can maintain that hold on that first wave. So really coordinating with your teammates uh, because if you can actually get set up in this hill, you can really turn it into sort of a money hill and then trade it on into that P6 as well. So this is really important hill on the map and I'll show you how you can use an X cross to actually hold it. So the main setup that teams would use would have one guy here at the main heady soaking the hill and he's going to be watching the rugs push this way and then you can have your second guy on the couches here and he could be watching the bricks push for him so as you can see here we do have an x uh, that's being made so the guy on the couches is watching the bricks push to make sure that no one pushes and kills anyone on the couches it's really important that this guy in the middle of the hill hides himself from bricks uh, because that's the whole point of the setup and then you have the guy in the middle of the hill watching the rugs push uh, to make sure that this guy on the couches doesn't die. So each player is watching the close push of the other player to make sure that everything is covered without dying from that other position that your teammate is watching. So it's really important to note the positioning of these players. So this guy at the couches here is blocked from this little wall from anyone that might be coming rugs. And this guy in the middle of the hill is gonna be blocked from that little shelf that was on top of this heady. So you really gotta note the micro positioning of these players. It's not possible for them to die without this person overextending, trying to kill them so and if they do overextend the person watching that cross will instantly be able to get that kill before they can even kill the other player and what I mean by this micro positioning and not being able to get killed without the enemy overextending is this so like let's say there was a player over towards brick side you know there is no way for him to get this kill on the middle of the hill if he's micro positioning correctly so that means he needs to get inside of the hill to actually take a chance at killing this guy in the hill so that's the whole point of the cross and maintaining that set up. You know, let's say this person on the hill was playing this position instead and watching the cross from here, you know, that's a free kill for anyone that might be coming bricks because, you know, they don't even have to overextend into the hill to get this kill. He just kill him right away. So making sure that he actually has to overextend, get inside and take positioning away to actually get into the hill to try and even attempt to get that kill is really important because once he enters, you know, this danger zone, he's free kills for this guy on the couches. And, you know, it's the same thing for this couch guy. Let's say he was playing, you know, just out in the open, watching this cross from over here, maybe even using this heady. You know, there's still a possibility where one person can slide rugs, bypass this first guy, you know, maybe diving or something, making sure that he doesn't get killed by that first guy. And just because positioning kills this guy for free, you know, you need to make them actually work for that kill and overextend to try and make sure that they can get that kill, but they're going to get traded for it. And this is why it's so key in those man advantage situations, because it's working on those trades. You know, you're never going to get a free two piece in this setup unless you completely miss your shots and the other person outplays you now once you get more experience learning these crosses and really looking at the map in terms of crosses you can develop some really good on the fly setups like these and you know these on the fly setups don't even need to be super close quarters so you know, let's say we're talking about p6 over here and you're holding the hill with your teammates in this back setup so you have these back spawns you're holding pretty nicely so you know this doesn't have to be super close quarters you can play with another guy that's playing like around this truck so what he's doing is watching your entire mid cross to make sure that no one's coming through that mid side to hit you onto the hill and while he's doing that you're watching his back kitchen cross so anyone that might be pushing through this back kitchen trying to break through here you at least have that info on them and you're playing that cross so you can even get shots down and you can also relate to that teammate to turn around and then you can work with them to team shot them from that perspective so you know this doesn't have to be a super close quarters hold this could be long distance you're just getting info for each other on each other's cross and look at the micro positioning of where we're 
playing. We're not exposing ourselves to these other side. You know, we're playing this hut on the hill, so we can't be killed from anyone unless they overextend through this way or through this way. And this other player is micro positioning around this brown van, so he can't get killed uh, from anyone that might be pushing out from the back kitchen. So, you know, let's say he was just playing out over here. You know, he can easily get killed from anyone just exiting the kitchen this way without this guy on the hill even seeing them. So once again, you're gonna use this a lot in holding situations in respawn. And if we go towards, you know, search and destroy, a lot of times you'll see this is in man advantage situations where either the bomb is down or the bomb is planted. So either of those situations, if the bomb is planted and you're on offense, uh, you can hold a tight setup with your teammate, especially if it's like a 2v1 or a 3v2 or something like that. Or on the defensive side where you know the bomb is down, you can play a cross setup with your teammate on where that bomb is down because you know the enemy is going to have to pick that bomb up in order to win the round so you can just play off of that with your teammate. So I'll run through a little on the fly situation that would happen in search and destroy. So let's say the bomb is down here in main and let's say uh, you have a 2v1 with your teammate. So you're gonna be working with your teammate to try and work around this bomb because you know the enemy is going to have to eventually pick it up. So technically what you could do with your teammate here, if you know the bomb is for sure down in the middle of this main lobby is basically just play a two man setup behind this desk. And what you're doing here is making sure that one player watches this way while the other player watches this way. So you know for 100% fact anyone that might be trying to get towards this bomb is going to meet one of these players in a 1v1 gunfight and then have teamwork from the other guy that's holding the desk as well. And if the player is going through you know a choke point that isn't the necessarily the one you're watching you're still going to have peripheral vision so you're going to be able to see and pick up the bomb obviously and both of you can react to that but you're basically just playing off your teammates info. So let's say you're player number one here you're holding the back p2 cross for your teammate and number two is watching that main entrance and let's say number two sees this guy coming from the main entrance even gets some shots down so he's weak that gives you some leeway as number one because this other guy is weak to go and chow right away with him he's not going to be expecting two guys right there unless he sees you but it's still going to be a free trade because he's already weak so you're just using that teamwork using those numbers that you have to your advantage and making sure that you can 2v1 this guy so you can win the round so it's also really important to note where the enemies can be coming from when you're in situations like this so let's say you're starting off the round with that common mid defense where one guy was at the IB heady watching the cross uh, to the bedroom. And then you have another guy that's couches watching the doubles push through. So anyone that might be coming doubles is going to be met with a gunfight from the guy couches if they're trying to kill this guy IV. And anyone that's coming, you know, front couches is at least going to have to fight this IV guy first before they get to the couches. So that's the X cross there. But you don't know what the offense is going to do at the beginning of the round. So it's easily possible that someone could just instantly rush through rugs here and then kill this guy Ivy from this angle. And since you're at the couches, you cannot see that angle. So it's important to note that when you're playing these type of setups, you know where the enemies are coming from. So that's why you would need to have at least one guy over here, either watching this push through or one guy in the cat room that can see this rugs push. So you're maintaining those possibilities of where the opponent could possibly be. So that's why you really need to make sure where the enemies are coming from, because you can easily die in this type of setup since you know you have an X cross, but obviously your back is not covered. So you want to be covered your bases in this type of setup. So once again, I'll go through a setup where it's really important to either know where the opponents are coming from or know the timing it would need to take for them to take the optional route. So let's say we're talking about uh, the B bomb over here and we're making sure that we have a post plant. So we're on the offense, we planted the bomb and now we have a 2v1, let's say. So we're both playing inside of this bomb site. So first things first, close these doors. You know, really big thing with post plants, close the doors, make them have to work for that specific angle and actually have to open the door up, give you that free info so let's say you have these doors closed and then you have your two guys in the hill so let's say one guy is playing over here and he's going to be snaking this heady and watching both freezer and watching this cat push and the other player is going to be let's say in this corner and he's going to be watching the back door for you so this is really important to know where the enemies are coming from because let's say this guy goes through the side door he can pretty much instantly get a free kill if he instantly checks this right corner but you know he has to open that door he has to get that info for free first and it's a possibility for this guy to just turn around and kill him anyway. So that's why you need to have this X cross because you're covering your three other bases. You're covering this back door, you're covering this freezer, and you're covering this cat room. So just at least getting that info and making sure that you're just not dying. You know, really important to note, you just do not want to die in these situations. It's better for you to stay alive than get the kill, obviously, because you're in that 2v1. So the longer that you can stay alive, especially on offense, the longer the timer is going down. And as long as you're just buying time, let's say in this position, 
you can buy that time, make this person have to overextend this way, and then this person can easily kill anyone that might be overextending from Freezer or from the cat room. So again, this logic applies to a lot of different game modes and a lot of different situations, and it's up to you guys on the fly to keep notice of what is going on in this situation. So it's really important to note where this last guy was as well. So if you saw him earlier in the round, if a teammate saw him, or if that last guy that was in a 3v1 died and you're now in the 2v1, he knows where that guy is. Let's say he killed him P2 over here. You know, the most common route that he's going to be taking is going to go through this diner because the bomb is ticking and he has to get there as quickly as possible, you know, rather than taking the full route of going all the way back, either through this side door or through the back door. So you can play off of that. So this is a situation you might be trying to play this type of setup because you know probability wise that he's going to be most likely coming from this side of the map and you can play off of that easily. So a situation where I see people trying to create an X cross, but it just doesn't work because it's not effective positioning is, you know, let's say we're talking about P3 over here and this guy is playing in this corner by the freezer and you're playing this corner by the side door. You're watching, you know, let's say his cat push and his freezer push while he's watching your side door. So this is not really such an effective way to do an X cross because first of all, this guy near the freezer can instantly die from anyone in the freezer without you having to contest him. So that's number one. But second off, you know, you're just playing these positions that are basically one and done spots. And when I say one and done spots, I really mean, you know, you're playing these little corners that in the new age of COD where there's slide canceling, there's cameraing, you're going to get instantly traded out or even lose a 1v1 gunfight because you're just stagnant in that corner. You know, older times in the past, a lot of times these situations would work where you're just holding this angle. But with the new age of COD, with cameraing, it's just really hard to hold that angle with that peeker's advantage. So this is a situation where technically this guy in the freezer can kill this guy for free. And then another enemy can just instantly come from this catwalk if he clears, you know, this angle and this angle and knows there's, there's not anyone snaking it, can instantly chow this and you have absolutely no way of winning that gunfight because he deciphered from that info that there was no one on those other two points of the hill, but it was still being capped from some positioning. So he's going to take his chances and slide and get that kill for free because you just have no chance at that point. So a really ineffective way of doing a cross setup. You don't really want to be doing this. Instead, you know, what you would rather do is use the headies and use the positioning that you have to your advantage. So a setup that you'd rather do that's more optimal is playing, you know, like this stove and watching the freezer from this way and watching the cat push through from this way and then you have your teammate and he could be playing, you know, this position over here and he could be, you know, both watching the side door and the back door. And if they're closed, like they should be, you're going to have that info and notice from your auto queue and you can adjust from that and basically hide yourself from these angles, whether you're going to here to watch the side door, whether you're going to here to watch you know, the back door from this way. So you are not getting killed for free at this position. And then your other teammate, you know, he's going back and forth watching those two doors. But if you wanted to, he can just watch one of the doors and then react to the other way. That's probably the most optimal way. You know, let's say he was just technically playing this position where he's watching the back door and you're both just adjusting to that pressure. So if you hear this door open, uh, this guy can adjust to that. He can look this way. And since you're already kind of being covered from this stove here, you can basically stay in that same positioning and you just try and keep yourself hidden from there and just continue to maintain uh, these other two cuts. So that's a way that you can really adjust your setup to make it more optimal. You know, you really want to be using what's in front of you to your advantage. If there's headies that you can use, use those to your advantage. Don't necessarily have to play just deep in a corner because a lot of the times once you get to the higher levels, they're just going to instantly side cancel you, camera you. You've probably seen it a lot in your rank play games where you're just like, I'm holding this angle, like I should get this free easy kill. But the new age of COD has come where teams can instantly just chow that because they can decipher where you're at and use that new age movement to really uh, hurt your chances of winning that gunfight. So the main takeaways, you know, number one, watch your teammates cross while you're in this setup. Number two, make sure you're using that environment around you. Make sure you're being covered so you can't either get camera like I was talking about, or the opponent can just instantly push uh, around another different lane and instantly hit you off. You know, maintain that cover for your positioning so that you can't get killed easily from another way. Number three, adjust to where the enemy is coming from. If you can get that info on where the enemy is coming from, now you can develop that setup and start playing it because you can play those probabilities and decide what you want to do with that info and make sure you're playing across based off of that. And lastly, just use some damn teamwork. You know, if you have that cross for your teammate, you know, make sure that you continually hold that for him. Don't give it up without not telling him because if you give it up and he dies for free, you know, that's a complete waste of the setup. So really make sure that you're coming with your teammate, using teamwork to actually, you know, get any sort of trades, especially if you're in that 2v1 setup, uh, but really just getting used to these type of setups in general, because this is a more advanced type of tactic and you really will see it at the pro level. But you know, when you're in your ranked games, all you need is 
one other guy to be using this teamwork with you. You know, you don't need three or four guys to do this whole tactic. As long as you have one other person to work off of, or even if you're not duo queuing, you can just play off of your teammates in general. If you see another guy is playing a position on the hold and you're starting to get some more game knowledge and understanding the game at a higher level, you can start to play based off his positioning and play on the fly and create these type of setups. So once you're getting more game knowledge, building that expertise, you're going to be finding yourself finding these different types of setups on the fly uh, going into this new game. So hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. And I hope you guys learned something. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.